It's the Sin Sports Side Podcast, exclusively on 1045theteam.com. And welcome into the Sit in Sports Side Podcast preview of the AFC North Division, our final division here on 1045theteam.com that we're going to preview. And of course, you can you stay tuned to youtube.com slash team1045 and 1045theteam.com to hear a bunch of other Sit in Sports Side podcasts throughout the NFL season. But right now, it's the AFC North podcast. And let me just say a caveat before we go into this, Cody. I mentioned that I hadn't really picked my wild card uh, in the AFC. My wild card pick is the Kansas City Chiefs out there in the West. And I also am going to put in a shot. I don't want to say a shocker, but a team from this division. I, I like should. a team from this division as well for okay, a wild so, card as well. So stay tuned to hear what that team is because we're starting off with the fourth place team. And something tells me for maybe the four, fifth or sixth time we're going to agree with the fourth place team. I'm going with Cleveland Browns. Yeah. The factory of if sadness bell, is going to continue. It. I like the move that they made by making Deshaun Kaiser their starting quarterback. This may be not done with <laughs> your franchise quarterback at Compared to all the other yeah, guys man, that you've had, I mean, your best option. It just proves that I, th- I really. It just adds to the fact that I really love their draft back in April, and I said this around that time too. I don't know if you remember, um, but it's on YouTube.com slash Team One Zero Four Five, so it's out there. It's it's written in stone. This is not made up stuff. This is this is real news. But I really liked the draft because I thought Deshaun Kaiser could have been one of the best quarterbacks in the draft. He was, was you know fell all the way, I believe, to the second round. To where they drafted him and still were able to get Miles Garrett, the number one overall pick, as well as uh, Jabril Peppers later on in that first round. So I think those three players, as a, a, a Chicago, a Cleveland Browns fan, makes you, this season, no matter what the record is, worth watching for sure. Because that's finally three players I believe you can look at and say, that's our future. That's what we're looking forward to in a year or two when we're finally going to be competing again. And not only that, but Isaiah Crowell really showed glimpses of what he can do out of the backfield and a lot of people are picking him to be a have a breakout year for the Browns people forget their offensive line really isn't that bad and one of the staples of that offense Joe Thomas Mm -hmm. who's been there I think he's been a Pro Bowl oh man it's got to be a lot I think he's been a Pro Bowl selection every single year since he came in the league could be wrong on that but I think it's close the defensive side of the ball is where you kind of get nervous. I mean, also the wide receiver position. But like you said, they go out, they add the young guys that they need. They're building for the future. It's going to be maybe in two to three more years before they actually start to become relevant in this division. Right now, the AFC North, I think, just has too many good defenses for the Cleveland Browns to compete. For sure. And I, another young guy that I did not mention that Cleveland Browns fans, the two or three who might be listening... Is that, is that too high? Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, Corey Coleman, obviously, he didn't have a great rookie season. Now in his second year with the, the quarterback, you think possibly the future with Deshaun Kaiser, see if they can get on the same page. I mean, they were able to retain Jamie Collins. They were able to bring in Jason McCourty. So, I mean, there's some other pieces that they have on defense, but like you said, I, I don't think their defense is good enough. And to your point, yeah, there are some good defenses in this division that it's going to be tough for this offense to possibly be, but I'm looking forward to the grudge, the grudge matches that seem to have, no matter what the record are, for the in-state rivals and Cincinnati Bengals, because they always seem to have good games, especially because Jeremy Hill, you know, tears them apart every year. There's a lot of orange in those games. I say, I, but by, by tear them apart, I mean, like, verbally, not necessarily <laughs> on the field. Um, but yeah, a lot of orange in that, and that's good to our th- that leads us to our third-place teams, and this is where it gets interesting, because I think that... I think we were both going to have the same first place team, but this is going to get to the worst two and three are. And my two, like I said before this podcast, is going to be my second wildcard team in the AFC. So without further ado, I'm going to say, Cody, go with your number three. <laughs> I've got the Cincinnati Bengals coming in third. I, everybody likes their defense. Again, it's the offensive side of the ball that kind of worries me. You've got a great quarterback in Andy Dalton. Let's face it, Tyler Eifert was a huge part of this offense the last few years, and that big injury that took him out of the majority of last season really killed what they were able to do, and I just don't see him rebounding well enough to contribute as well as he did. Remember, he beat out Rob Gronkowski for the most touchdowns for a tight end two years ago. A lot of it runs through him. He's able to take the pressure off those wide receivers. A.J. Green, a deep threat all the time. Again, you're looking at 
uh, Giovanni Bernard and Jeremy Hill trying to get the job done, I don't know if they can. What about Joe Mixon, though, entering the mix in Cincinnati? <laughs> it's possible, and you really tried way too hard on that one, but <laughs> it's possible. I mean, you, from what you've seen of him, we're not talking about his character. We're talking about strictly his performance as a football player. Right. You think that he's got a lot of upside to him. Now, I don't want to bring this up, but this is something that we probably shouldn't bring up. The pod, but with the whole Ezekiel Elliott thing going on, that happened before he was in the NFL. So is Joe Mixon subject to discipline in the NFL? I mean, I don't want to bring that up necessarily. It's not the pod, It's not the right podcast for that. But I just kind of had a brain strategy. That, I don't know. I just kind of came I just... Baffle. That's a little. I mean, maybe there's a little uh, more evidence on that one. Maybe a little it. more evidence. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more. Uh, so uh, maybe he should, you know, be, you know, get a few few games to start his career. But regardless, though, I think that their running back has got that trio similar to what we were talking about in Seattle in the previous podcast, and you can see the uh, listen to those on youtubecom team 1045 because there's three different guys who could take over and there's Giovanni Bernard who could is the catcher out of the backfield. Jeremy Hill is the ground and pound and Mixon who could be the whole package. So that, that's what's to like about th- those running backs. This is where uh, I'm going to disagree with you actually. I think that the two are interchangeable. I think the Baltimore Ravens and Cincinnati Bengals are both going to be very good teams this year. And that's why I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to put the Cincinnati Bengals to have a bounce back year because of Andy Dalton who is, I think continues to be underrated in this league. He's going to have a, back back, a bounce back year. You add in the fact that you have John Ross. I know he's injured, uh, but the rookie, I think that he'll be a big part of this offense. I think Tyler Boyd, who was supposed to break out last year, could be a big part of this offense. Um, Eifert, I'm always kind of suspect about Eifert, but I think from a from a fantasy perspective, eh. But from an NFL perspective, he's a good target, like you said. So um, I really like what, what that offense can bring to the table as a whole. And I think the defense, I know Burfick's going to be suspended, but when Burfick is back and healthy... And when, when you know, I, they just have a lot of, seems to be hotheads. I mean, I, I think perfect. it's always been on the, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, it's always been on the field. Then you have Adam Jones, who's always really off the field more, but when yeah. he says off the field, perfect just a, a hard player. I mean, that that, not, that might be minusculing it a little bit. I've always just kind of seen him as a really hard player. That might be go a little too far sometimes. But, uh, so I really like their defense. And that's why I think, I, I do think Cincinnati and Baltimore will come down to their uh, two times they face this season, I'm going to take Cincinnati to beat them and make their way into the playoffs. So I guess we should talk about Baltimore, and I'm assuming is your second place. Baltimore team. is my second place team, and I'm going to tell you why. Well, they've got Justin Tucker, and your <laughs> other teams don't. Justin Tucker, the guy is pretty much automatic. I mean, I watched him play <laughs> when we went down to the Jets game this past year, and I think he had five or six field goals yeah, in that a caveat one. Yeah, on that, we were both at that game. Didn't know each other existed at the time. <laughs> um, and you think that you, you, the amount of times he lines up for a 50-plus yard field goal, you're like, this guy has to miss one. Granted, he has missed a few. He's not 100%. But he practically, when he hits it, it's as close to down the middle as you can possibly get. Like, if you, if there was a stat that graded kickers, on made field goals, how close they were to the exact center every time. Justin Tucker has to be the leader, and it can't even be close because you'll you'll go out for fifty six yards. Yep. You'll be like, as a fan, if you've got him on your fantasy team, you're kind of nervous that he might miss this and cost you a few points. But he just goes out there and boom, and you're like, I don't know why I was sweating that. That would probably was good for seventy. That might have been good for my house to uh, M and T Bank Stadium. He he's, he's just that good of a kicker. Yeah, but, but that being said, <laughs> okay. Aside from I've the never kick. really heard that as a reason <laughs> to pick a team over a team to, in, to finish higher in a division. <laughs> it could come down to a field goal. If good. it comes down to a field goal, who's the man? I just said it does come down to the game, the, those two games, and that could come down to a field goal for sure. I agree with that. Um, but I did just say it was a toss-up. I like both these teams. I think they both have good defenses, and then it's going to come down to the offense. And the ad of J- uh, Jeremy Macklin will open up things for Mike Wallace as well there in Baltimore. So there's really a lot to like about the Baltimore offense as well. It's just, I think for me, it was the questionable about Joe Flacco. Who really didn't play all offseason. There is some injury concern there for the first time maybe ever in his career from what I remember. Um, so that, so I think that even though Dalton's had some injury problems in the past, I, I think I'm going to trust Dalton going into this year more than I trust Joe Flacco, and that's why I'm giving the Bengals the edge. And not only that, but Rashard Perryman has really implemented himself as a go-to guy as well. Then you add in the fact that they pick up Danny Woodhead, who I get it, his 
pretty much been a role player kind of a running back, but he this works. is a team that hasn't had a stud running back in quite a few years. They've been alternating between numerous guys trying to find the answer, and I think Danny Woodhead gives you some stability, albeit he's also spent some time injured as well. So if he can stay healthy, it certainly looks favorable to them. And this talk about their, you talked about their defense a little bit. The thing I like about their defense is they were good, and it was kind of under the radar. All of a sudden, you know, Ray Lewis retires, and I think a lot of us thought, well, the Ravens aren't going to have the same kind of defense. But look, Terrell Suggs is still there. C.J. Mosley's there. And then you look at the secondary, you've got Eric Weddle, Ladarius Webb. This is a really good defense, and I think that's what's going to give them the edge. You look, when it comes down to tight games, I think it's more the Ravens' defense is going to be better than their opponent's offense, whereas... You can't expect this Ravens offense to necessarily get the job done, and I think that that's why it's going to be that defense that's going to be leaned on a lot to keep Baltimore on top. Very good, and that leaves our first place team, the last team, the 32nd team that we are going to talk about on our series of preview podcasts, and that can only mean the The, Steel Curtain. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to win the AFC North, and think about it. The Killer Bees, Ben Roethlisberger, quarterback, You've got Le- the Killer bees. Levan Bell <laughs> at running oh, back, man. and then you've got Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown, <laughs> which I did not know, and I feel kind of dumb not knowing this that he's the son of Touchdown Eddie Brown, who played in yeah. for the Albany Firebirds in the mm-hmm. Arena yep, Football yep, League. Yep, so yep. those guys, it's just hard to stop all three of them. I mean, some teams manage to do it, but I mean, let's face it, Levan Bell. With. And now has to go out and prove, hey, I'm worth more money that you decided not to give me. But I hold true to my word. I came back to the team. You franchised me, whatever. Yeah. But And then you add in the fact Martavius Bryant takes right. the load off of Antonio Brown. This team is One too, of the fastest receivers in the league. Yeah. So. Too many weapons on this team offensively. You like their defense as well. I mean, they're not called the Steel Curtain for a reason. So this that you got to like the Pittsburgh Steelers, the consistency Every year, year after year, Mike Tomlin does a great job with his team, and I'm sure they're going to be AFC North champions, and who knows? We're talking about, you know, uh, everybody's saying the Patriots have gotten better since winning the Super Bowl, but if one team could knock them off, Pittsburgh could do it, and those are the reason why. not concur more, I think. I think that's what, this is my, uh, I, I thought they could do it. At the end of last year, I thought, you know, my initial reaction was, yeah, I think the Steelers could come back and be the team favorite next year. Um, but I also like the Raiders. If we're going to bring in the conversation, do that as well. Um, T.J. Watt on this defense. How did I forget T.J. Watt? I, I love T.J. Watt. I was going to say, man, Wisconsin, that's your thing. Um, had a good preseason game against the Giants. Locally, uh, that's to the lo- a lot of teams. Or a lot of people saw that locally. And, uh, you know, maybe some lackluster offensive line play by those Giants, but still he was able to to have a good showing there. But then the real the, the real big guns, Ryan Shazier, Stefan Tuitt, the ageless James Harrison. So they have a lot on defense as well. Like you mentioned, we were talking about the Cleveland Browns. A lot of good defenses in the division and does not uh and the Steelers do not disappoint with uh, with that st- in terms of that statement. And they added Joe Hayden. From the Cleveland they did Browns. I mean, I get it. This is, I, I don't blame the Browns for cutting him because they're a team that's trying to go young. But this is a guy that's been in Pro Bowls before. He's been rated some of, one of the best cornerbacks in his career. So he could also have an impact. Oh, 100% for sure. Now he's on a team that's actually going to compete. Maybe he that ups, ups his uh, ante a little bit. And he's even better this year than he has been in, in seasons past. So... Uh, I really like, uh, and like I said, I'm going to put the Bengals in as my wild card in the AFC as well as the Kansas City Chiefs, which I did not uh, signify when we did that podcast. I guess I should kind of go through and go with my playoff teams, huh? I mean, obviously... The well, you can, is, or I mean, I you really can tease go. it to when those will all be posted, plus our Super Bowl picks, our AFC and NFC title game picks, and our MVP picks of the National Football League. Those will all be up on 1045theteam.com. Take that, uh, make make a visit over there, you know, frolic your way over to <laughs> 1045theteam.com. Uh, look for Gaz's uh, NFL preview blog post, I believe, and all of us. Cody Marshall, Eric Hanman. Uh, I don't want to s- promise people 
who aren't going to do it, but a lot of other board ops will have theirs as well as, obviously, Tom Glislowski himself from Levesque and Gaz. Wow. Name drop. <laughs> any, any last comments, Cody, on this division or anything else in, the, in terms of NFL before we let the season start on Thursday night? I think this is going to be the, probably the most fun division to watch outside of the NFC East. I think you've got three teams that are legitimate contenders. Cleveland could be the... Over under, under one and a half nationally broadcast. I mean, I think we already know the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I, but basically what I'm trying to say is we're almost guaranteed one primetime Steelers-Ravens game, right? Oh, yeah. It's like That's like Yankees-Red Sox. You're guaranteed at least one a year. And obviously Yankees-Red Sox happen a little bit more because there's 162 games in a season. But... That's like the one. If you had to, well, then again, this would be an interesting podcast to have because then again, you'd have you're almost guaranteed every year Cowboys Giants as well. Yeah, Cowboys Giants starts it off. They're the first. They're Sunday usually night the game. first. Yeah, and then oh, December 10th. I already looked. Got it right here. Steelers Ravens on NBC. So Sunday night football. But ah. hold up. Week 14, they'll already be flexing games. So if by chance either the no Steelers way. or the Ravens There's absolutely no aren't having a great flexed. season. That game could be flexed out for something else. I would put money on that. That game does not get flexed, no, even if the Ravens are flexed, having a bad year. Or Steelers. I don't want to leave the Steelers out of that possibility. But um, based on this podcast, we don't believe that's going to happen. And yeah, looking forward. To, I'm always a big fan of Thanksgiving games. Does that, those will definitely be fun. And I, I think we're, you know, if I, um, I don't want to make any promises, but there's like a 95% chance we have a Thanksgiving Day preview pro- podcast around November around that time. So that'll be definitely fun. And then this year, again, for a second straight year, we have games on Christmas. So the Watt brothers meet each other at some point, and it's, I think it's one of the holidays. They either meet for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Hang on, let me. I don't think it's Thanksgiving because there's only three games on Thanksgiving and it's Detroit definitely, Dallas definitely, and I believe the Giants are playing definitely. So that would rule all those. That would rule Thanksgiving out for sure. Christmas, it might be Christmas Day because I believe the Steelers are playing on Christmas Day. Obviously, there's Christmas Eve, a bunch of Christmas Eve games. I believe there's December 23rd games as well leading into that weekend. Christmas Day. Yep. Uh, 4.30 game? Yeah. 4.30 uh, game? On, hang on. Wait for it. NBC, NFL Network, and no way, Twitter, Amazon. Oh, Amazon's Amazon! Air it, so. Have you heard about the Fox six-second commercials? No, I heard that they're going to have six-second commercials this year to uh, deal with the attention span issues and the compl- complaints about after a kickoff. Six-second spot, get back to the game possibly. I don't know if that was a six-second spot in addition to the 15 and 30 spots or if it was just one six-second spot and we're back to football. We'll have to find out. I'm not I'm not advocating to watch Fox, but you're going to do it anyway because it's NFL uh, uh, Sunday. So And that's who's got the <laughs> NFC East, let's face it. Yeah, exactly. They have the whole NFC. Right? Don't you're going to be watching Fox. All yeah. right. You're going to have to listen to, 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 to Joe Buck. You're going to have to listen to Troy Aikman. It's going to John happen. Lynch is gone, though. I don't know who got promoted. Jay Cutler no longer going to be with them. I mean, I hate to diss anybody, but I'm not. I'm looking for less forward to watching some CBS primetime games because I'm not sure I'm gonna love Tony Romo at that as that color commentator. I'm gonna love Kevin Burkhart though, calling games. Young guy, like his. Oh, he does a good job. He's number he two, does. right? Number two. He was number with, two but he, he was with partner. Lynch, so yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm sure it's been announced, and we're totally, you know, not with it. But we'll find out. You know, who he's paired with this season. It should be fun. You know, Lynch, out of nowhere, got the job, and that's comes full circle even though we're not doing the NFC West we already did that I was gonna say that comes full circle but it doesn't you know what does come full circle though Cody us finally finishing us our finally <laughs> finishing our NFL previews this one might have dragged down a little bit too long so if you made it to the end here we really appreciate you listening to dare I say all of our NFL previews podcasts hopefully if it was just this one we obviously thank you for just listening to this one as well so for Cody Marshall I've been Eric Hammond thank you for listening to the Sit and Sports Side podcast there's more to come baby stay tuned to youtube.com slash team 1045 peace